Next up is an 820-00165, I believe, that doesn't turn on. First thing you'll notice is that there's a pin corroded on the JTAG connector. It's almost broken off. Look at that. Next up, the DC in transistor looks like it has a big notch of oily looking stuff on it. I don't know what the hell that is. This is where the power from the charger is going to come in the board, and ew, that's some wet, oily crap. And then the other side of the board, it looks kind of wet. I don't know if that's cleaning fluid, water. I can see that somebody attempted to clean this before, and I can see that this, oh yeah, this is a common area to corrode, so it looks like maybe some solder was applied there. This was corroded at one point. I can tell that somebody has cleaned this before simply because this area was previously corroded. See how this is not really the proper silver? Like, this is nice and silver, but this is not. Liquid spill on computer through the fan port, took the local repair shop, and they cleaned the computer. Great. Thought charging port was bad since it would not charge, but was able to run on battery. Was able to run until battery died. They changed the charging port and battery, but did not help. They believe the logic board needs replaced. When computer was running, it would start off quiet, and about 10 seconds in the fan would go to high speed until computer was shut back down. Great. So, somebody else already messed with it. Boo. All of our hints are going to be gone. That sucks. So first thing we're going to do is plug it in. When I plug it in, it's drawing zero amps on my power supply. Since it's drawing zero amps, that tells me that there's nothing going on. OK, so we're going to open up a 00165 schematic and board view. And Paul Daniels is amazing software. Let's see what I get on some of the main power rails. Now, I'm getting a light on the charger, which means that PP3V42 is there. You need PP3V42 to be present in order to get a light in the charger, because this is the rail that is responsible for the SMC chip turning on. If you take a look over here, you'll notice that U5000, which is my system management controller, this is powered by PP3V42 underscore G3 hot. And this is the chip that's going to talk to the charger. As we can see, if I look for something called sys one wire, this one wire is on the DC inboard. This is where the charger speaks to the system management controller. And the SMC needs to work for that to work. So PP3V42 is present. I know that because I'm getting a green light in my charger. The next rail that we want to look for is Pepe Bus G3 Hot. We're going to find that on F7140. So let's take a look and see what we're getting on our Pepe Bus. If I look over here, Pepe Bus G3 Hot is 1.5 volts. Now, 1.5 volts is no good. That's not, that's not, that's not what we're looking for. We're looking for something closer to 8.5 volts. Yeah, that's, that's no good. Where's PP bus G3 hot? Here we go. PP bus G3 hot, it says 8.6 volts. So you need 8.6 volts. And we're not getting 8.6. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna see if there's a short to ground on that line. Let's see if that's the case. 7.9 million ohms. So we don't have the issue of a short to ground. There's no short to ground on the line. 7.4 million ohms. So what we're going to do next is check out what's actually creating that line. And what creates the line, PP bus G3 hot, is U7100. So U7100 is going to be found down here. This is U7100. And let's take a look around that area. And let's see if we're getting all the things that we're supposed to be getting over there. So first things first, we're supposed to be getting charger DC in on pin 2. And we are. Next thing. Let's check current sensing. Ah, here we go. I believe we have found the cause of our problem. There's something called a current sensing circuit. The way a current sensing circuit works, this chip over here, U7100, which controls my charger, controls the power coming from the adapter, it wants to know how much current is flowing through the system. This is similar to wanting to know how fast water is moving down a stream. You can't tell from looking at a stream how fast the water is going, but you can tell if you put your hand in, you can feel how hard the water is moving. Let's say that my friend wants to know how fast the water is going through the stream, but my friend's really far away from the stream. I'm going to put my hand in the stream, I'm going to feel how fast the water is moving, and then I can yell to my friend and tell him how fast the water is moving through the stream. The same thing is happening over here in this circuit. If you take a look, this is going to be the hand in the stream over here, R7120. Hmm. Why does it not follow my cursor properly? <laughs> Bastard. Follow my cursor. R7120 is like the hand in the stream over here. So you have from adapter, the voltage is going to go from the adapter and it's going to go down here before it goes to the system. After it goes through this resistor, it's going to go down here and become PP bus G3 hot, which powers the battery along with everything else in the computer. Now, this resistor is like the hand in the stream, and there's going to be a teeny tiny voltage drop when you move across this resistor. That teeny tiny voltage drop across the resistor is going to be directly correlated to the amount of 
current being used by the circuit. The more current being used by the circuit, the greater the voltage drop. The less the current being used by the circuit, the lower the voltage drop. Now the ISL6259 is kind of like my friend, whereas R7120 is my hand in the stream. So the R7120 is going to yell over to the U7100, hey, there's this much voltage drop in the circuit, which is going to mean, hey, the circuit's using three amps. The U7100 is going to have a connection to the top of the resistor and over here to the bottom of the resistor. That's charger CSI P and charger CSI N. So what it's going to do is it's going to figure out the difference between charger CSI P and charger CSI N. The larger that value is, the more amperage the circuit's using. The lower that value is, the less amperage the circuit's using. Now, how would we measure to make sure that this is working? So we have charger CSI P, which has a 10 ohm resistor in between the chip and the current sense resistor, and charger CSI N, which has a 10 ohm resistor between it and the current sense resistor. Now, if I want to see if the circuit's working, I could either measure between the chip and this resistor, between this resistor and that resistor, between this resistor and that resistor, this resistor, and then back. But that's a lot of work. What I would rather do is simply add up all the resistances on screen, which is 10 plus 10, plus 0 0.02, and then add that together. That comes out to 20.02. So if I measure between pins 27 and pin 28, on ISL6259, the total resistance that I get should be equal to the sum, which means that the total resistance should be 0, uh, 20.02. Now, if I go over here to the chip itself and I measure between pins 27 and 28, let's see what I get. I get 27.6 million ohms, and the M is flashing. Paul, why is the M flashing? Paul! And I'm sure Paul will fix that later. Somewhere in the line, this is broken. So let's measure each one of these resistors and see if it's either one of these 10 ohm resistors. So that resistor is 10 ohms. That's not the connection that's broken. This resistor is 10 ohms. That's not the connection that's broken. The connection between the resistor and the chip is not broken. The connection between this resistor and this chip is also not broken. Now, if we follow along the line, it should be very obvious why this is broken. So let's zoom in and follow along. This resistor, this resistor up here is R7121. R7121 is going to attach to R7120 over here. That is going to follow through over here. And what is, what's this? It's broken. It's broken. So where this is supposed to go, there's nothing there. See? From here to here, There's nothing, nothing left. See, is there a... Is there a nub? Can't even find a nub. It got burned out. And it's expected that that got burned out because this is 16 volts. This is a high voltage line compared to everything else in the machine. So it's no wonder that that sissy little probe point got burned. So now what we're going to do is find out where that's supposed to go. We're just going to run a wire. So it seems like it's going to the other side of the board, right over here, right to this. So let's run a wire. Jumper wire and start a fire, as, the, as I like to say. I lost my X-Acto knife, which is why I'm using this. Because soldering to the resistor is a very tiny area, whereas this is a big area, so it'll be easier for me to do. Okay. Oh, why didn't I get rid of this stupid foamy crap in the beginning?
There's also this chip, which, let's face it, this is going to wind up dying a week after I give it back to them. I can't leave this like that. So that's got to go. U1950 is for something to do with all sys power good and PMPCH power good. This is a common one. This is why you don't clean the board and leave stuff like that on there. That's just going to wind up failing a week after the customer give it, gets it back. Uh, the chip looks like it's bleeding, doesn't it? Look at that. It looks like there's blood coming out. There's blood coming out from the chip. Blood coming out from its wherever. Oh, man, this blood came out of the chips wherever, and it's everywhere. Ugh. I hate when blood comes out of the chips wherever. <laughs> that wherever blood really doesn't want to leave. Time to put a new U1950 on there. I'm going to turn this thing on, and it's going to be amazing. It's going to be great. Get you nice and flat on the board. Our current sensing circuit had a disconnection between R7121 and R7120. So the ISL6259 would not be able to see the voltage at the top of this resistor. It would not be able to tell how much current the charger was using. So as a result of that, the ISL, which controls whether the charger gets to see the computer, decided to turn off and not let the charger see the computer as a result of not being able to tell how much power it was using. Since it couldn't tell how much power was being used, it decided to shut everything down. That's that. Is your MacBook disgusting? Is your MacBook filled to the brim with sweaty pubic hair? If that's the case, you need an ultrasonic cleaner, and store.rossmangroup.com is the place to get it to you. On store.rossmangroup.com, you can find an ultrasonic cleaner tailored to your specific need. Whether you need something that's small for a cell phone board like a P230, or a large ultrasonic cleaner like the P1200 for a larger touch bar, we've got you covered. We've even got large special order types of ultrasonic cleaners like the P2600H45 that are great for car parts and firearms. With over 1,000 five-star reviews on shopperapproved.com, you can't go wrong. Don't delay. Buy today. As always, I hope you learned something. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video.